so we're going to be testing uh, the difference between two means. In this case, um, I put up a scenario in which we have a can of tomato soup here. Uh, I'll call it can one. It is supposed to weigh 350 grams. And uh, also we have a can two. It's also supposed to weigh 350 grams. Maybe these two cans uh, come from different uh, factories or production line. Let's just imagine this is from Zealand and this is from Jutland. And we want to make sure that these cans weigh the same. Um, so what I'll do is I'll take this can, put it on the digital uh, scale here and weigh it 10 times. Why 10 times? Well, even though my digital scale here is very precise, it still has a standard deviation of 0.02 grams, uh, which means that those 10 uh, weighings will deviate from each other. I won't get the same result every time due to this uh, standard deviation here. And I'll do the same for the other can here. I'll do 10 weighings and uh, presumably I'll get 10 more or less different results. And so how will I determine whether these two cans actually weigh the same? Um, can I make any st statistical evidence uh, to say whether or not they do weigh the same? Well, the first thing I have to do is I'll state a null hypothesis. And uh, this time the null hypothesis concerns the difference of the two means, meaning that I have an hypothesis, I have a hypothesis about the difference of the two means. This value here is my hypothesized value, and I'll set it equal to zero, which is the same as saying that my hypothesis is that the two means are the same. But strictly speaking, my hypothesis is about the difference of the two means. My alternative hypothesis, I will choose to be a two tailed test. So, um, I'll just state the fact that they're not the same. So this is the same as, or the difference is not zero. That's the same as saying that they're not the same. And to test this hypothesis, I need a test statistic. And I'll find one in the book. In chapter 5, I believe it's on page 232. The test statistic is the difference between the two sample means. So this sample mean here uh, comes from those 10 weighings here, and this sample mean here comes from those 10 weighings here. And I subtract the hypothesized difference, which in my case is zero, and I divide by the combined uh, standard deviation, which is the standard deviation of the first sample, or the first uh, population, sorry, divided by the sample size plus the Standard deviation squared, so it's really the variance, same thing over here, divided by this sample size here. Now, in our case, the variance of uh, population 1 and the variance of population 2 is the same because the variance comes from the, from the balance here. I mean, these, this can does not change its weight during my experiment. It, it weighs the same, and so does this. So the only variance I can get is from actually the measuring device. Um, so in my case, these are the same, but in general, they don't have to be. Neither do the sample sizes have to be the same. In my case, they are the same because I weighed 10 times and 10 times here, but they don't have to be. I'll call this 
test the test z naught because it does have a standard normal distribution. So now I have it and I'm, I'm able to compute this number and I am able to um, say something about whether or not it's an unexpected number and how unexpected it is. And we'll do that in Excel. So here we have the 10 weighings of CAN1 and CAN2. And uh, the first thing I need to do is to compute the uh, the sample mean of the first sample here x1 and that's equal to and that would be uh, the average I think the command is called in English in Danish it's mil mil i just mark all these numbers here and I'll compute this the the mean of the second sample. It's a little too quick. Like that. Um, we also need the variances or the standard deviations. And in our case, it's the same. But just to make it a more general, I'll write it as two different standard deviations. And the same thing goes for the sample sizes. They're the same in our case, but they don't have to be in general. And now we are able to compute the test statistic, set not. And the test statistic is the difference between the two sample means minus the hypothesized difference, which is zero in our case. And we divide by the square root. So SQRT in English. This is in Danish. And uh, we input the first variance. So I square the standard deviation, divide it by the sample size of that sample, and then the second standard deviation squared, divide by the sample size. And that gives us a test statistic of 1.67. And um, then we compute the p-value. And that's 2 times 1 minus, and then we need the normal distribution in Danish normal for dating. And we input the absolute value of the test statistic. And we choose 0 as the mean and 1 as the standard deviation because it's a standard normal distribution. And we write true or in Danish set for the cumulative distribution function. Oh, did I do something wrong here? Um, oh yeah, I forgot in a bracket. Right, but it looks right now. Okay. So we get a p-value of a little more than 9%. So if we have a significance level at 5%, that means that we um, cannot reject the null hypothesis. In other words, um, we don't have a statistical uh, evidence to say that these two cans of tomato soup uh, weigh uh, have different weights.